week nine. This is going to be day two and three. I purposely did not work out yesterday because I could just still tell that my chest was not, my upper body was not recovered from my workout on Saturday. You know, that day where I snorted Viagra and just went to the bodybuilding gym and just got a massive freaking pump. I was sore for that for, I was sore from that workout for like three or four days. I just now feel kind of, you know, recovered from that. So I, I purposely rested yesterday. Monday I squatted, rested Tuesday, let my upper body give another day of recovery. And then flying to Australia tonight for the rest of the year. And so today that means I'm actually gonna do, I think it's gonna be a badass workout. It is gonna be a badass workout. It's, this is not how I would normally train, but because I'm not gonna be able to train for like two or three days, I'm gonna consolidate my deadlift and my bench press workout into one. Not normally how I would train, because it's, dude, it's hard to like really put 100% effort into like two big compound lifts, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. It's like either you, you, do, you do the workout and you hit these lifts, or you miss one, and like, I don't miss workouts, never. It's, it's important enough to me that you just make do, and you just gotta do it. So today's gonna be like a total body workout, which would be kinda cool for you guys to see. And I don't wanna give too much away right now, but you will be, I think, pleasantly surprised on how simple and how elegant this workout will be. And I'm just letting you know right now, it's gonna be fucking hard. It's not gonna be easy at all. So I've already drank two coffees and now I'm sipping on my pre-workout, which I have carb powder, salt, electrolytes, some Pokari Sweat, which is like powdered Gatorade in here. And uh, yeah, pre-workout, pre-workout powder with some like obviously caffeine and some other stuff. But just getting my mind right, I've been like visualizing this workout for the past two days because I didn't get to work out yesterday. Actually, I did work out. I hit, I hit some rowing intervals, a minute on, a minute off, just because I needed, I'd been sitting on my ass all day. And whenever I sit down all day, like working on my computer, I get really, really antsy. And I also tell myself, this is not the way humans are meant to live their life. Like humans aren't meant to be, you know, cooped up in fucking cubicle. No, it goes hot. Uh, cu cooped up in, in uh, cubicles, you know, or definitely not staring at computer screens all day. Um, and so like even days where technically are rest days, I'll always, do something active usually to get my heart rate up actually every day when after i you know i wake up i eat breakfast and then i, I go swimming for like five or ten minutes and get my heart rate up right there so like, i always get my heart rate up kind of early in the day because it just like sets my mind it primes my mind to like start working but even then like i'll sit down for like a long time and i just i i can't sit still and I'm also reminded, like, you're just, humans aren't supposed to do that, man. Like, sitting is a disease. That's why fucking the world, and especially the United States, is in an obesity epidemic. They're so, f like, fat and unhealthy because the world's just become, you know, a land of convenience. People can just fucking order low-quality junk food, you know, just right from their phone. For, like, the drop of a hat and gets delivered to them at their door. You know, it's actually, it's sad. It's, it's not a good thing. And, you know, most Americans are just, honestly, they're ignorant. I don't want to call people dumb, but they're, they're just ignorant and oblivious to what's happening to them. They just go through their whole lives eating low quality shit food, thinking it's normal, processed junk food. And it's, yeah, it's, it's not a good thing. And that's why, dude, people, they, they're obese. They're sick, metabolically sick, dying because they just sit on their ass all day, never exercise, and they just live on low quality processed foods. Today I'm lifting heavy and I'm gonna attack it because I'm not gonna get to work out for like basically two to three days. I'm about to get on a, you know, a long ass flight from you know Dubai to Sydney's a 14 hour flight. Which I'm really not looking forward to, but it's not that bad. Every time I fly home to the States, it's usually a 16 hour flight. So 14 hours is, you know, manageable. 
And then if you fly Emirates, dude, it's, it's really, dude, it's not that bad. And what's good, like you get on the plane in Dubai and I'll get off the plane and I'll be in Sydney. So pretty simple. And like Emirates is, I'm pretty sure, like the most profitable airline in the world. It's like the best airline in the world. Like I love Emirates. Dude, that, they're not the cheapest airline by any means, but you get what you pay for and flying economy is, dude, it's really not that bad, I don't think. I mean, maybe one of these days I'll make enough money to fly business. I don't think I would ever fly first class even if I was rich as fuck. I just couldn't justify spending that much money and just like that. I just don't think that would be a good use of money personally. But I'll be flying economy. Nothing wrong with that. As long as it gets me there. And yeah, it'll be basically my first time to Australia. It's crazy because I'm actually going to go film, um, you know, a video or two videos with Australian strength coach, you know, Sebastian Orup. So, like, I started this vlog series like nine weeks ago. And now I'm fucking going to meet the guy. Going to meet him in person. And he's going to train me. I'm like... I don't let anyone train me. I hardly let anyone train me because I've like I know exactly what I'm doing. However, I know that I, there's always more to learn. Like I remember I, I made a video where I got trained by Stan Efferding, which was fucking awesome. I love Stan Efferding. Just an amazing, amazing guy. And I'm going to work out. Yeah, thank you for opening the gate. Fuck yeah. I wish I could vlog that. You should seen that guy. Nice guy. Stan's really good. He trained me. I, got, I filmed a video with him. It's criminal. Didn't get more views, but it was like, you know, it was very casual, unscripted, unplanned. And th these videos with Sebastian Orr will be kind of the same. But he's going to take me through. Dude, you want to park up in there? I fucking hate backing out. I'll be filming. I'm going to try to film two videos with him. So basically, he's going to take me through like a heavy squat bench and deadlift. And then uh, hopefully he has time. I can sit down and do like a, a good like question and answer, you know, session with him, which I think would be cool because I could ask him a bunch of questions, get rapid fire answers and get really good content for, for anyone that follows me that wants to learn more about strength. Because that guy, he knows this shit about strength. And I mean, dude, I'm, I'm actually anxious to learn and I want to learn more from him as well. All right, now I'm going to go fucking crush this workout. Warm up. Warming up my deadlift and my bench at the same time. <sighs> oh, three. Nice. Warmed up. I'm getting there and we're getting real close. Now I'm gonna put my working weight on my deadlift. I'll hit two more sets of warm up on bench. I warm up pretty fast, I don't, I don't fuck around. All right, but today's warm up's taking a little bit longer because I'm, I'm supersetting my deadlift with my bench. It's because I got a lot of cover, I got a lot of work to do today. We'll go five plates. It's 224. I'll probably just put 500 on the bar. All right. Ooh. Actually, Throw these little things on here. Oh. Jimmy hit one rep of my working weight. That's just to turn my central nervous system on. So this rep may not feel great, but it's gonna switch me on, okay? What I mean switch me on, my body and my brain is gonna have to turn on all its motor units to lift this weight. This is 500 pounds, and I haven't lifted this heavy in a while. All right, I know it's there, and the goal is to hit this for a set of four today. First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel the weight and do it for one rep. Fuck, I forgot to put a clip. Not bad, all right? Actually felt pretty good. Moved a little bit slow. I think four reps is there. If I fucking attack it, you gotta attack it. Now, I'm gonna hit my final set on my bench. 
warm up set. So this is 225 plus that'll be 247. Be about 252, 253. All right, on my bench. Again, warming up. This is not the way the program is meant to be done. You shouldn't be working up to a heavy bench and heavy deadlift on the same day. All right, shouldn't be. I don't get to train for another three days after this, so I fucking got to get it in. And you'll notice what I'm doing here is I'm supersetting my deadlifts and my bench. That way I'm pairing literally a pull and a push, okay? And I'm giving myself plenty of recovery between sets of deadlifts because I got the bench between, and I'm giving myself plenty of recovery between the bench press because I got the deadlift in between. And just because I'm a weak little bitch when it comes to deadlift, or excuse me, bench press, I'm just taking an extra warm up set. I'm putting on a belt so I can get tighter. I'll probably put on some sleeves after this too. Nice. All right. That moved pretty good. Whew. Time to get to work, all right? Notice I'm gonna take my shoes off. I always pull my deadlifts with these big ass clunky running shoes, old man shoes. These are actually the worst shoes to ever deadlift in. There's a lot of cushion. There's a lot of space between you and the floor. I do that because I got an ankle issue. But when I'm hitting a top set, I'm going from the floor just with no shoes, socks on. All right. So naturally I'm in a better position. All right. I got a better connection with the floor and I got to hit this for four or five reps. My first conventional deadlifts in like fucking nine weeks. Real conventional deadlifts. Goals 500 for four. Fucking easy. Hardest part about that is my thumbs because I hook grip. See that? Skin's about to tear. All right. Well, there's 500 for five. Probably gonna hit that for seven, eight. Hard to say. I did one extra rep. I was supposed to do four. I did five because 500 for five sounds way better than 500 for four. And I can fucking do it. Yeah, top set of bench. Yes. <laughs> kind of shit reps, but I got it, at least unassisted. They weren't exactly paused because I didn't know if I would be getting that pause. But now I got my back down sets, which I'm happy about. All right, I'll hit the back down sets for sure. It's a fucking win in my book. I'm probably not optimally recovered from my chest, but it's all good. So I got four, 275. I wish everything was as easy as deadlifts, but. That's not how life works. But I got my reps. So I got five on deadlift. I got four on bench press. And so I'll take it. Not exactly perfect reps on bench because my ass was coming up. I could feel it. But I could definitely hit that for probably a double or a triple for good reps. And now I'm hitting my back off set. So I got two sets of eight on deadlift paired up with two sets of eight on bench. First back down set on bench. It's uh, 105 kg, 231 pounds. Goals set of eight perfect pause reps. Hard when you don't breathe. Banged out five, one breath, then 
breath and six, seven, eight. And again, this is kind of challenging when you're supersetting two big compound lifts. Normally you don't do that, but I'm fucking happy, man. I fucking love working out more than anything. Except maybe my girlfriend. I love her a lot. I hope you guys understand the simplicity you've seen. I've done two fucking exercises. All right? Two exercises. That's all done. And I'll hit a few more, but that's it. Hit one more back down on deadlift and bench. All I'm doing right now is letting my heart rate come down. All right? So I can hit this last set of deadlifts with maximum intensity and effort. Second back off set. 405. I'm going to save my thumbs right here. So I can feel the skin is about to rip. I'm just going to go double overhand grip, no hook grip, and we'll just see if I can hang on to the bar or not. I might have to switch to a hook grip midway through the set, but that's all right. It's going to be a good grip workout one way or the other. good I don't like using straps very much all right you need to train your fucking grip super important to train your grip and if you rely on straps too much you don't train your grip enough and I've seen power lifters show up on meat day they've been training with straps the whole tire prep they fucking get there they'll deadlift the fucking bar and then it slips out from them at the top because they can't hang on to it because I didn't train their grip. And again, I'm not a power lifter. I just want to be strong, jacked, fit, and most importantly, healthy. And I do that by getting as strong as I can with a barbell and also with my own body weight. Pull-ups, muscle-ups, dips, handstand push-ups, handstand walks, basic gymnastics. Even though I weigh 205, 210, always be able to move your body weight. More to strength than just barbell but I love the barbell. Long story short, I just deadlift to 405 easily, no hook grip, double overhand, strong. Happy my grip held up. Last back off set. Yes. Oh, fuck yeah. This workout is going exactly how I planned it. All right, I fucking, I've been visualizing this workout in my head for the past two days. And it fucking went exactly as I visualized. I don't think people understand the power of visual, visualization or the power of positive thoughts. That's just fucking real, right? This sounds cliche, but it's fucking not. You have to conceive something, then you have to believe it, and then you can achieve it. So it's conceive, believe, achieve. If you think that sounds fucking corny, I don't give a fuck, all right? That's the truth, man. If I teach you anything on these vlogs, it better be to fucking believe in yourself, all right? Believe in yourself and to be thankful. Be thankful to be alive. Be thankful to be able to work out. Because not everybody can. Now, here's my finish my main strength work. Deadlifts, bench press. Now I'm going to hit three accessory exercises to train my total body. And I'm always choosing the exercises that give me the most value for my time. Always. I just hit heavy deadlifts. So a really good accessory after heavy deadlifts is heavy bent over rows. I'm going to hit one set right here. Notice I did a deadlift at five plates, then I hit back off sets at four plates, and now I'm hitting rows at three plates, all right? And these are gonna be like dead stop bent over rows with explosiveness. It's not strict, this is for power development. Same thing, deadlift stance, deadlift grip, and I'm just gonna pull this bar to my belly button.
Oh, six. One of five, six. All right. Been a while since I've done those. I'm not trying to do strict form. I'm not trying to think about bodybuilding when I'm doing those. I'm just thinking about power development. All right. And literally just moving the weight as explosively as I can. So you call those power rows if you want. Dead stop bent over power rows. It's fucking really good exercise. All right, so I hit one heavy set of bent over rows. Now I just want to hit some bodybuilding hypertrophy work. So I saw Eddie Cohn doing these the other day and that guy's the greatest powerlifter of all time and he's forgotten more about strength work than I'll probably ever know. But you see him doing a bent over row with his head supported and he gives a big stretch. I'm only going 185 here. I'll go for you know 10 to 12 reps. Just notice my range of motion. No momentum, it's all strict form, all right? So, double overhand the bar, and I'll deadlift it, kind of, and then put my head on this, and then I'm just gonna pull that bar to my sternum. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten to twelve. Amazing exercise right there. I can just feel a big pump in my back from doing that. All right. So that'd be like a head supported bent over row, prioritizing range of motion, big stretch, and pulling. Good hypertrophy exercise. And if you don't have like a chest supported row, and you want to take your low back out of the equation more or less, supporting your head on a pad like this really eliminates a lot of your low back erectors, glutes, and hamstrings, and it allows you to focus on your mid to upper back for this exercise, all right? You'll still use some of your posterior chain muscles, but a lot less when you have your head supported like this, and you're able to isolate your mid upper back better. Really nice variation. And then right after the rows, I just did a horizontal pull, right? Now I'm gonna superset it with a horizontal push, all right? so. Am I teaching you guys anything yet? How simple effective training is? All right, you just prioritize value for time exercises. Exercises that you can lift the most weight through the largest range of motion, all right? And that's what's how gonna get you strong. Notice I'm not doing any fucking fluff exercises today. I'm doing five exercises and doing them well. No isolation, just compounds today, all right? Because that's how you think about it. On the exercise hierarchy of what's gonna give you the most value, compound lifts are always gonna be at the base. All right, accessory exercises are gonna be right above that, like this. And then the fluff, lateral raises, bicep curls, tricep extensions, fucking cable flies, that's all superfluous, it's fluff. All right, it's not as important. Here we go. Six to eight. Punch. that makes sense so I guarantee you can build a strong jacked and lean muscular upper body doing zero isolation exercises zero squats deadlifts presses rows pull-ups dips that's six exercises six movement patterns guarantee you can be jacked just doing those without ever doing a single isolation movement all right and that's pretty much all I do in my training. I'm always prioritizing the most bang for your buck exercises, always. When you look at exercises when you're designing a training program, all right, it needs to make sense. You should be doing things, everything should have a reason in it, all right? And so I'm taking a program, and even though, come on, I'm not following it perfectly. I kind of am, but again, because I'm consolidating two workouts into one, a deadlift day, 
and a bench day, I'm choosing these accessory exercises for a specific reason. So I hit deadlift and bench press, right? And then my tricep is a dumbbell bench press, which is, which is a great accessory for the barbell bench. And then a bent over row, that's actually a great accessory for both a bench press, an upper body day, and a deadlift. So that carries over into both. And then I'm hitting here a deep leg press. And this is a great exercise, all right? Leg press is an amazing exercise regardless, but the reason I love it so much, especially when it's programmed in this context, is because my low back's already pretty taxed from all the heavy deadlifts. My legs haven't done that much though. And so a leg press hits your legs hard without taxing your low back. And a leg press is a great accessory exercise for a deadlift to improve leg drive off the floor. All right, so when I'm doing this, you could actually think about, you're like, you're upside down and I'm actually just deadlifting, all right? So by pressing the sled, I'm thinking about pushing the floor away from me when I'm deadlifting. So notice my feet, they're in the same width, same width as my deadlift width, all right? And so I'll take this out. And then I'm gonna go deeper than I would on a deadlift, obviously, because I just wanna hit more hypertrophy and a more range of motion. So the goal is 10 deep heavy leg press. I'll probably hit two more sets of that because that feels really good. <sighs> kind of hurts my ankle a little bit, but that's all right. I'm good, I'm good. <sighs> so there's that, all right? Total body workout today. Normally it wouldn't be like this, but today it is because you're consolidating two workouts. That's five fucking exercises, all right? It's not about how many exercises you do. It's about how well you do the exercises. And again, the world's best coaches, Stan Efforting, I put out a video with him. He does two or three exercises a workout. Two or three, that's, that's it. And he's a world record holding power lifter and pro bodybuilder, all right? Sebastian Oreb, one of the world's greatest strength coaches, all right? He puts out exercises. If you saw my program, you would look at it and be like, what the fuck is this? That's it? It's like that for a reason, actually. Less is more, less is better. He'll program two to five exercises to work out maximum. And even me, myself, all right, with my straight up strength program, I've been having that for years. It's always like between two and five exercises. It's always less is more and always prioritize the most bang for your buck exercises. And I'm actually, I'm making this a program. So this is gonna be my 12 week getting stronger as a natty program. And I'm literally gonna take the same program that Sebastian Orb gave me that I paid $2,000 for $2,000 I paid for it. It was worth it. And I'm going to put it out to everyone, except I'm going to improve on it. I'm going to include more details and a few refinements that I think will actually make the overall program better, you know, for my own programming biases. I'll program a couple additional exercises that I think will give, make the workouts, you know, it'll improve the workouts. Not to say there's anything wrong with the workouts, but just in my opinion, I'll, th I'll throw in some extra stuff to make them better. All right. It's going to be a 12 week program. I'm going to sell it for 45 bucks. I bought it for $2,000. I'm gonna put it out there for the world for $45. And it's gonna include a state-of-the-art app. All your weights will be programmed for you too because it's a, the way the app works. So it'll be percentage-based and it'll calculate all your weights automatically, all right? It's gonna be a really good thing I'm excited about. It. I'm gonna be talking about it in my future vlogs, my 12-week Getting Stronger as a Natty program. It's gonna be dropping soon. Move your hand. All right, so I just made this YouTube short the other day because this is so fucking true. There's like all these guys or all these guys, young men that fucking watch too much social media and they get body dysmorphia because they are all looking at all these fucking fitness influencers that are just blasting steroids that are ridiculously jacked and shredded. 
these fucking guys don't have body dysmorphia. They're just fucking pussies. Honestly, they don't fucking train. They don't eat right. And, you know, they don't, they're not consistent. And then they want to complain that they have body dysmorphia because they compare themselves to people they should never compare themselves to. And then they're tempted to take steroids when they're still a young man. They've never even fucking trained hard. It fucking pisses me off. So there's the context. And now I'm going to show you this YouTube short that I'm going to post soon before this vlog comes out. But this is like real shit. I want you guys to understand like the context on this. If you're a guy that thinks he suffers from body dysmorphia, you probably don't. More than likely, you just have a case of vaginitis because you train like a pussy, don't eat enough food, don't sleep enough, and lack any kind of consistency. And if you're considering taking steroids because your favorite influencer uses them, not only do you have vaginitis, you're also being an impatient little bitch. Look at me. I'm 100% lifetime natty. I don't have body dysmorphia or vaginitis. Why? Because I train hard, eat right, and eliminate all excuses. So instead of moping around feeling sorry for yourself, put your phone down, get off your ass, and go help yourself. Bro, you hear that? That's fucking real shit right there. All right? Like, that is a really to-the-point video for a YouTube short that will hopefully get views. And it's going to make people think, like, oh, damn. Fuck. I shouldn't have body dysmorphia. Maybe I just need to fucking quit being a little bitch and stop training like a pussy and actually go train hard. Because if anyone has been watching my vlogs, it, I don't fucking do steroids. I fucking just train hard. And I'm consistent. And... Yeah, I'm not as jacked as all the dudes that are, you know, on steroids, but I like the way I look. I'm fucking completely happy and content and I'm fucking healthy and I can maintain this. I've maintained the same physique for like 10 years. All right. And it's not going anywhere. And fucking today I just hit like, I didn't hit a PR, but it could have been a PR. I hit 500 for fucking five easy deadlifts, dead stop. You know, I probably could have hit that for eight if I wanted. And so it's like, man, I'm so tired of like because you see this shit on youtube and social media oh body dysmorphia so many young guys and men suffer from body dysmorphia these days dude quit being a fucking pussy like seriously just go fucking train you know go train hard eat the right kind of food and then be consistent all right for at least 12 months and i promise you your little fucking body dysmorphia will go away because what you'll actually do is you know you'll get stronger you'll build muscle and you'll build a physique that you're proud of and not only that you'll actually develop discipline consistency and the most important thing is you'll be confident because hard ass work builds your confidence when you fucking go into the gym and you work hard all the time all right not just sometimes not just when you feel like it but fucking all the time you build confidence. Building a strong, lean, and muscular body naturally builds confidence. Man, I just got fucking triggered on like a rant by that piece of content, which I think will hit pretty hard. All right? So, dude, if you're watching this vlog, you don't have fucking body dysmorphia. All right? If you do, more than likely, it's just because you train like a pussy. All right? You're not consistent. You don't eat right. You don't, you, you literally have not done the work to build a strong and lean muscular body. And you definitely do not need to take steroids. Steroids, for most guys, they're just a fucking shortcut. They're just immediate results. And then it ends up just fucking up your health and your hormones. And for a lot of guys, it does more damage than good. And dude, so many fucking dudes people in general are just lazy pieces of shit and they're impatient all right don't be impatient don't be a lazy piece of shit all right i just got home from my workout had a badass workout and i was going to show everyone how i always food prep before i travel all right i do not eat airplane food ever all right i just airplane food is not good for you and i just if i don't have access to good food i do not eat so i food prep i shouldn't say i food prep my girlfriend, who's an angel, food prep for us. So I was gonna show you, I was gonna show you what I was gonna cook was steak, it's already cooked. This is just chopped up ribeye steak. It's just the hot, it's three ribeye steaks. It's in bite size, okay? And my girlfriend and I, we will just eat this on the airplane. This right here is chopped up apple and chopped up pineapples. So, and mango meat and fruit. This is the food that we'll eat on an airplane because we don't eat airplane food. That's all I, I just, I, well, I've eaten enough of it, she's, yeah, 
<laughs> but it makes you bloated. But yeah, it just it makes you bloated. Like airplane food, it's it's not great for you. It's way better to have your own high quality food. Another thing you guys could do if you don't have airplane food and you don't have enough time to food prep, take a protein drink. All right. A lot of times I would just put four or five scoops of protein powder in a Ziploc bag. Take an empty shaker bottle because you're not allowed to bring liquids on a plane. But you could take protein powder and you could take an empty shaker bottle. Put that, take that with you in your carry-on bag. That way you got high quality protein that you can mix up on the plane so you don't have to eat airplane food. All right? So remember, where there's a will, there's a way. All right? There's no excuse not to eat high quality food all the time if you just plan ahead. That's my blog for today. I'm going to Australia for the next two weeks. I will vlog there. It'll be less consistent, but I'm going to work out as much as my girlfriend will let me. She'll let me work out some. All right. And, and, and we'll, we'll vlog it. All right. So we'll pick this up when I'm in the land down under. See you guys. Thanks for watching.